Hello, my name is Pierre Alain Marchand. Uh, I'm Regulatory Compliance Manager and I have been working in the drone industry for seven years. So as you know, since January 2021, the drone regulation is harmonized between all the European member states. The regulation is divided into three categories. The first one is the open for VLOS operation under 120 meters. The second one is for advanced operation. It's called the specific category. It's for BVLOS operation over people. And the last one is the certified categories for the higher risk operations. If your operation cannot be conducted in the open category or is not uh, falling under a standard scenario, you will require an approval from your civil aviation authority according to a SORA methodology. SORA stands for Specific Operation Risk Assessment. It's a 10 steps risk process to define the safety requirements to conduct your operation safely. Today, we will focus on four crucial steps. So the first step that we'll talk about is the ground risk class. SORA contains a table from which you can determine the ground risk of your operation based on the characteristic of the drone, the, the size, the kinetic energy, and the operational scenario. With its size and screw speed, the EBX will fall in the first column. Let's say you want to do a BV loss operation over populated area. Your initial ground risk would be 5. It's possible to reduce this number with the mitigation M1, M2 and M3. M1 is a strategic mitigation to be put in place before your operation. M2 is based on the design of the drone. You need to reduce the risk in case of collision. And M3 is your emergency response plan. We've worked with the European Aviation Safety Agency, or EASA, to get a minus one or minus two with operational limitation for the M2 mitigation on EBX, EBGO, and EBAC. With our M2 mitigation, you could reach a ground risk as low as a tree for a BV loss operation over populated area. The second step I'll talk about is the air risk assessment. You need to determine in which air risk class your operation is conducted. If you operate in restricted airspace, it will be ARC A. If you operate in uncontrolled airspace over a rural area, it will be ARC B. If you operate in uncontrolled airspace over a urban area, it will be ARC C. And then, if you operate in controlled airspace, it will be ARC D. Let's consider our BV loss operation is conducted in urban area, so it will fall in ARC C category. For BV loss in category B, C or D, you will need a solution to see and avoid the air traffic. As for the ground risk, it's possible to reduce the initial air risk. For example, if you consider that the traffic is lower than expected. The next step is to determine the cell level of your operation based on the ground risk and the air risk. Let's get back to our example with a ground risk 3 and an arc B. The cell level will be 2, which remains easy to achieve. Without our mitigation, the cell level would be 4, making it more difficult because it requires several months of work and an expensive review of the EASA. With larger drones, without mitigation, the cell would have been 5, making it extremely difficult because you will require a full certification of your solution. After determining the sale level of your operation, you need to prove that you comply with each operational safety objective, OZO. Different levels of justification are required depending on the sale of your operation. To request an authorization to your civil aviation authority, you will need several documents. One is the CONOPS. For example, you need to describe when you will fly, where you will fly, your procedures, your training, the drone you, you will use. To facilitate the process and save you tens of hours of paperwork, we've prepared a set of documentation you can adapt for your own SAIL 1 or SAIL 2 operation. For more information, you can contact us at this email address and it will be my pleasure to help you.